I lost my mom, I lost my eldest sister, and I lost my dad in a space of 48 hours. And we ended up burying my mom and my dad on the same day, and then my sister on the following day because of COVID. You know, I, I, I can't explain it, but really I felt like somehow I was going mad. Was I said, could this be real? Am I, am I in a nightmare? Am I, am I in some horror movie? Am I going to wake up? Is it going to stop? But as the minutes started, you know, passing, started going, I thought, this is real. This is what has happened. We, I had an elder sister. She was living near my, my, my parents' place in Koba 2. Uh, her name was Vimbai Musengi. So I remember one time she gave me a call and she was like, ah, Millicent, uh, I'll be going home. I think uh, one of our, uh, one, our nephew, Kuda, he's got a very bad flu and we're just, maybe, we're just suspecting that it could be COVID. So she went home and she started doing everything to just make Kuda feel, feel better. So they both agreed that they needed to go and have a COVID test. So they went to Claybank, I remember, Claybank uh, Hospital. It was the one which was offering those services in Guero. And then on a Friday, that was on a Friday morning, I remember around 12, uh, she, she, she gave us a message. She just passed a message on, on our WhatsApp group. You know how it is in family group. And then she was like, ah, guys, we both tested COVID. Mom and me, we have tested COVID, so we are going to self-isolate. I'll be self-isolating at my place in Koba 2. And then mom will also be self-isolating uh, in Koba 1. So it, it was just normal. And we all just had to like encourage them, you guys, you need to steam up, you need to, to do everything that was supposed to be done. And they had also gotten the prescription for the COVID. So on, on Saturday, where we, we kept on doing, you know, like uh, asking them, how, how are you guys doing? Are you, are you taking enough water? Are you steaming up? Are you eating enough? So that the medication uh, works for them. And then on Sunday, uh, I have a twin, by the way. Uh, Cindy had uh, gone out uh, with work. So she, she, she came back on a Sunday and then she said, I need to go to Mkoba to check on both mom and Vimbai. So when she went to Mkoba, she was like, ah, I, I, I think I need to monitor these guys both she's in the health department under the Air Force of Zimbabwe. So when she, she said I needed days from work, so she managed to just get four days. And then on Monday, Cindy had to call me and she was like, Millie, when I got home, the state that mom was in, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. It's, it's more like she has deteriorated to a level that I couldn't even recognize. And she, she, she was like failing to speech. Like I, I, I just didn't understand. So when she told me that, I had to call my mom. And I remember when I called her, when she answered me, she was like, ah, uh, uh, yeah. you know, like something had, uh, I don't know, like something was happening to a jail, I know something. So I, I became very worried. And then I, I had to ask Cindy, so how is Vimbai? And then she also said, remember Vimbai is asthmatic. She's also having difficulties. She, she, she's been trying to steam up and do a lot of things, but we are just hoping for the best. I think we need to keep on what? Praying. And then I remember I had to check up again on mom around um, six in the evening. And then around that time when I gave mom a call, you know, she, she was failing to speak properly. But that was a cause for concern for both of us, myself and Cindy. Because I was so worried and I was like, if mom is failing to speak, what does that mean? You know, it's, it's a very big sign for someone who hasn't been doing so well. So uh, past midnight, Cindy calls me. I woke up in shock because I was like, Cindy calling me this hour and she's with mom and mom wasn't doing so well. What could it be? I was expecting the worst by that time. And then she said, Mili, wake up, wake up Shamari and let's pray. I think we need to take uh, mom uh, to hospital because she's saying that she's failing to breathe. All of a sudden, when I went to check on her before I went to bed, I found her sitting and she was saying, I'm failing to, to breathe properly. So we tried everything but she's failing to breathe properly. I think I need to, to have her oxygen levels you know, boosted up. We need to go to the hospital. So by then they said we are getting a car from a friend so that they rush with her to the hospital. Ha! Ah, I was just so worried. I couldn't even sleep. So I kept on checking on WhatsApp. How is it? Did you guys get a car? So they got a car, yes. But when they got to the hospital, but before they go to the hospital, I remember Cindy narrating to me now, saying just before we go to the hospital, I felt like mom was just passing, she was going. And then she said, ah, 
apapanga pa ipapo that was my mom telling my sister so Cindy was busy trying to fill in the forms and i remember uh Vimbai's husband had accompanied them as well so Bamkuru was also busy running around informing everyone on the whatsapp platform ah chiera has been admitted uh, we want to thank god i think she's doing well now and then Cindy said all of a sudden we saw the nurses doing cpr on mom and that was just in a space of less than 40 seconds and then the nurse had to just come to her and said, we are very sorry, but we have lost mom. Just like that. So when the message was conveyed on the family group, I was devastated. And I remember that time my daughter had come for holiday. And then I was like, she's only 11. I can't tell her, I can't cry. And it was just something else. So the psychosocial issues that come then are there is each major issue is stress, not being able to cope, not being able to know how to handle. It's a new thing. Uh, some even end up uh, abusing alcohol, taking drugs. If they are those that are already probably been drinking already, it becomes excessive. Um, some some may even uh, become uh, antisocial. Because you have no one, you have no one to turn to, and you 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 lock yourself in that cell whereby you are saying, um, "Who can hear me? Where can we go?" Uh, the, the 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 hospitals are also not fully equipped. Uh, financial statuses are compromised. Uh, people are not understanding this. Um, uh, warm, warm, what was it? Uh, this home based care with uh, we're not like well informed how to handle it so we proceeded to go home and when i got home again baba was like is Millie here so he was sitting in his bedroom he was sitting on the bed actually so when i got into the bedroom he was like mili my wa kwa kuchina 45 years tiritese and i was like baba let's thank god for the years we are all devastated by the passing of mom the stigma because once people get to know that there's a funeral it was a funeral it was a covid related funeral that brought about a lot of talk in the community it brought about a lot of resentment from even the closest of relatives there was just a lot of stigma within the community and you know how it is you know our culture where when one passes everyone is there like people from church relatives just everyone just to you know to give you emotional support so i think that was the biggest challenge that we also faced it was just closest relatives people who were so daring to say we are just going there covid or no covid we're just going to support so i remember when cindy gave me a call she was like "Milly, wake up my nyasha is not doing so well and i could hear the groanings in the background she was more like i i don't know but i i felt like she was praying somehow and then when they rushed her to the hospital i was at home remember i was at the funeral trying to also support my dad and i remember i woke up i started bleeding praying asking god please intervene and it was it was a whole lot of things you'll be so confused and i remember there were people at the funeral and they were just wondering what is happening what is happening you know people didn't know because i had gotten that call and when they rushed her to the hospital uh, she says that when we go to the hospital when we go to the bed they were told that no the oxygen uh, had depleted they needed to get another tank and then my my bam kuru says oh no we have another tank in the car let me rush to get the tank in the car the moment he rush he is rushing to get the tank in the car vimbai is going and she just passed while well, least my twin sister was there holding her in her hands and i remember cindy said you know it was so traumatic it was i i can't explain it because when cindy called me she said me lima inya shavashaika and i was like what are you saying vimbai wandaona maskati how can you say that she has gone and then she said that's what i'm telling you me vimbai is normal and it was even a shocker to people that were at home who had gathered for mom's funeral to be told that vimbai has also passed just about the same time and coincidentally she passed in the same hospital on the same bed it was a well-known someone she was a journalist so when when news started spreading it spread like a wildfire i remember people started giving me calls because people knew me in the circles of civil society they knew i had 
uh, they knew me more than the other siblings because they had seen us in different platforms in different forums with Vimbai. So everyone wanted to know, is it true? Is it true? Is what we are hearing true? And I remember, I don't know who got the news because by the time uh, it was done, the news was all over. It was on social media. A prominent journalist passes hours after mom succumbs to COVID. It was just, it was just a shocker. So, you know, I think people also don't even know what it means when such news is spread on social platforms, how it affects the people that are closest to people who would have gone, you know. So it was, it was so devastating because I remember when we were just looking at each other with CD and my eldest brother, Tichatonga, we were all like, do people really know how it feels to lose people in less than 24 hours? You know, same case, COVID, COVID cases. So I just, just knew. So now the danger was, how are we going to convey the message to my dad? That was another story. Because we knew that the issue, the case, the issue of my mom was a shocker to my dad already. And even by being the closest to them was going to be something else. So we needed to protect my dad. And we said, we all just agreed that no, we are not going to convey this message. Let's just play it normal. Let's act like it's, everything is well. And uh, that was on Wednesday, right? So in the afternoon, I remember my uncle, my father's youngest brother came and he's the one who had to convey the message to my dad. I think that is when all hell broke loose. My dad couldn't even believe because he had to ask again, which Vimbai are you talking about? Are you talking about my Vimbai? And then my uncle said, eh, Vimbai when you are. And then he said, ah, oh, but we felt him just going then. That's when he just gave up. He just gave up. So it was, I know a lot of people would be asking, was Vimbai vaccinated? Why my parents vaccinated? Vimbai was vaccinated, yes. But for my parents, remember they had underlying illnesses. So we were all just careful, but we just never thought that COVID was going to hit us in such a way. So when dad heard about Vimbai, I think that's when he just gave up. Because it was just by that time, I think it was around uh, 12, in the 12 noon. But from there, the situation, the condition just started deteriorating from bed to worse. He was on oxygen, on, off, on, off, until the extent that he said, can you please come and remove these things? I don't want this on me anymore. So I think people just managed to persuade him around six in the evening. And my twin sister said, uh, we need to rush Baba to the hospital because his oxygen, I, I, I see his fingers are turning, they've got this discoloring, meaning to say that his oxygen levels is being deprived of oxygen. We need to rush him to the hospital. So he agreed, I think around six in the evening. So my, 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 my cousin had to rush with him to the hospital, but unfortunately, uh, just before Bata, that's when he also passed. So we ended up losing three members of the same family on the 10th and 11th of August to COVID-19. It hasn't been easy because I remember when the message was conveyed again on the family group, ah, even people that were there, they failed even to contain me because I couldn't even understand what was happening. Because I said, Baba was just sitting on the sofa. How can you say he just died? 10 minutes later, he's dead. What are you guys saying? But that was, the re that was reality. That is what had happened to us. So for me, it broke me really. It broke me. But I remember even when I was just sitting, when reality just hit me, I would be like, Sakavato Favari 3, and that would just break me. So that would just break me. And I know a lot of people, they are a bit uh, skeptical on getting the jab. I know it's an individual decision, but at times, it's better for you to have protection than not having any at all. When you go out there, try by all means to mask up. Try by all means to sanitize. Try by all means to, uh, you know, social distancing. And try by all means to get vaccinated for yourself, for your children, and for your neighbors, for your loved ones. It will help you because we just don't know. Remember when I spoke about the episode of my sister, when they go to the hospital, 
apparently the oxygen they say that it had depleted it, it there was there was no oxygen they had to rush elsewhere to get the oxygen uh tank so i i, I feel that there was a gap there though i'm not really blaming them but he, I would also recommend to our government to really prioritize the healthcare system because I believe that a lot of people died prematurely because our healthcare systems are not really, you know, on point in terms of having enough equipment, enough uh, motivated staff to to be looking after such cases. So when when my mom and my sister tested positive, I think. Uh, my my nephew he was a bit traumatized because he felt like he's the one who had brought the COVID back at home so in a way his mental state was not well because everybody was like you know you brought the COVID at home you are at fault i really think that when such things happen there's need for people to be really careful about what they say remember no one really wishes for someone to die especially a loved one to die in such a way. Normally we, we may tend to, to blame, especially the, the person who would have uh, brought the, 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 the COVID-19 into the family, but also not forgetting that even that individual, I not to any mental issue, I have uh, probably caused the death of a father, of a mother and a sister which may be something that may affect that individual uh, mentally to an extent that it becomes a trauma for that person that he or she would have to live with it for the rest of his or her own life if there is no proper counseling uh, that would have been given or psychotherapy that would have been given to that individual. So I want to um, advise and also recommend communities to really take time to understand when there's a global crisis, a global issue like the COVID-19 pandemic, there's need to, to do a lot of research and understand what it means. I've seen people walking around in town without masks and I've seen a lot of uh, uh, mask fatigue that is happening as we speak now. But even if you were to look at uh, global news, CNN, etc., there are different, um, you know, they are, it's more like the COVID-19 is not really gone. It's there. And there are cases that we are hearing from China, everywhere, where people are now dying again of the COVID-19 pandemic. So I think as a, as a community and even as a country, let's try by all means to be wise. Let's try by all means to take the necessary precautions, the necessary measurements to protect ourselves, to protect our children, to protect the communities against the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, as social workers, we really face challenges where even a patient can even refuse uh, to take a um, medical way of uh, um, of de to deal with the pandemic. Some prefer uh, going to church. Yes, it's not a bad thing, but sometimes you need to pray and also get medical help uh, as quick as possible.